FICON and Project MX-1016. The Cold War era, marked by intense military rivalry, spurred numerous innovations, including the groundbreaking concept of flying aircraft carriers, epitomized by the U.S. Air Force's FICON project. FICON, a portmanteau of fighter and conveyor, was a 1950s program exploring the deployment of smaller fighter aircraft carried by larger bombers. The core idea of FICON was to pair a large bomber capable of long-range flight with a small, agile parasite fighter. This fighter could deploy a nuclear bomb with precision before rejoining its mothership bomber. This strategy offered a solution to the limitations of bombers in carrying out tactical reconnaissance missions, as they could now transport a more stealthy aircraft to needed locations. For this ambitious project, the Convair B-36 Peacemaker was chosen. With a wingspan of 230 feet, it was the largest aircraft of its time and remains the largest mass-produced piston engine aircraft. The Peacemaker's selection hinged on its impressive range of 10,000 miles and a maximum payload of 39,600 kilograms, despite its original design for nuclear bomb delivery. Initial experiments in the late 1940s, preceding the main FICON project, involved wingtip coupling, where smaller planes were attached to a larger one wingtip to wingtip. Successful tests included pairing a Culver Q-14B Cadet with a Douglas C-47A Skytrain. This led to the Tiptoe MX-1016 project, where two Republic F-84 Thunder jets were connected to the wingtips of a modified B-29 Superfortress, aiming to extend fighter jet range. The central FICON project innovated by exploring various deployment methods, including a trapeze system mounted below a bomber's fuselage. A modified Peacemaker, equipped with this trapeze mechanism in its bomb bay, carried an adapted F-84E Thunderjet. A Thunderjet, with a retractable hook in its nose, could be stored in the bomber's bomb bay during flight and retracted back after deployment. However, this arrangement increased drag and reduced the bomber's range by 5 to 10 percent. This design also allowed the fighter pilot to exit his aircraft while docked, making lengthy flights more tolerable. In 1952, FICON trials achieved 170 successful launches and retrievals. The system went into production and service with the Strategic Air Command, with the faster F-84F Thunderstreak replacing the F-84E. However, despite its apparent viability, the FICON system saw limited action. The emergence of the newer B-52 bomber and the U-2 aircraft in the late 1950s led to the FICON program's cancellation. Akron-class aircraft The Akron-class balloons, helium airships from the early 1930s, represented a pioneering venture in aviation as the world's first purpose-built flying aircraft carriers. Among these, the USS Akron stood out, capable of carrying, launching, and recovering several F-9C Sparrowhawk fighter planes. However, Despite its monumental achievements, the Akron was tragically ill-fated. During that era, airships were lauded for their long range and low operating costs, making them advantageous for military transport. The U.S.'s Akron-class airships, including the Akron and its sister ship, the USS Macon, were designed as airborne bases for scouting and reconnaissance missions. Manufactured by the Goodyear Zeppelin Corporation, the Akron measured an impressive 800 feet in length, making it, along with the Macon, one of the largest flying objects ever constructed. These airships could carry a squadron of Sparrowhawk fighters, enabling extended scouting, stealth operations, and providing air-to-air -air defense. The Sparrowhawks were deployed and retrieved using a trapeze mechanism, allowing them to scout for enemy submarines and ships. However, the Akron's operational history was marked by tragedy. In early 1932, during a landing attempt at a naval base, the airship rose abruptly after the mooring line was cut. Four men handling the landing lines were pulled up into the air. One managed to let go at 15 feet, sustaining a broken arm, while two others tragically fell to their deaths, and one, who secured himself with the rope, was eventually rescued. The Akron's journey ended on April 4, 1933, when it encountered a violent thunderstorm off the coast of New Jersey and crashed, resulting in the loss of 73 of the 76 men on board. The Macon continued to operate until February 12, 1935. It too met its demise in a storm off Point Sur, California, suffering structural failures and descending into the ocean. 
Thanks to the life jackets and inflatable rafts on board, a lesson learned from the Akron disaster, only two crew members perished in the Macon incident. Today, the wreck of the Macon remains a submerged monument to a bold yet ultimately ill-fated chapter in aviation history. Project Zvino Throughout much of the 20th century, while the U.S. Navy and Air Force were making great leaps in the development of flying aircraft carriers, so too were their Soviet counterparts. In some respects, the Soviets took the concept of a mother aircraft delivering parasite fighters a good deal further. Led by Vladimir Vakhmistrov, a pilot and aircraft designer in the Soviet Air Force, the program aimed to enable a single large aircraft to deliver a greater number of fighters. By rigidly attaching several smaller planes to a larger one, the combined propulsion power of all the aircraft could be utilized at takeoff, allowing for a larger overall payload. Vakhmistrov's first prototype, Zvino-1, was developed within six months. It consisted of a heavy Tupolev TB-1 bomber as the host craft, with two modified Tupolev I-4 fighters mounted rigidly on its wings. The initial Zvino flight, despite a minor incident with premature fighter release, was successful, demonstrating the concept's viability. By 1934, Zvino-2, featuring a third plane fitted over the bomber's fuselage, took to the skies. Later, Zvino-3 introduced Grigorovich IZ fighters, equipped with single machine guns and multiple 76mm recoilless guns. These fighters were mounted beneath the bomber's wings, a significant departure from the previous configurations. However, the Zeno-3 flight ended tragically. The fighters struggled to launch at high speeds from beneath the wing, resulting in a collision with the bomber and the death of a pilot. Remarkably, the damaged bomber managed an emergency landing. The Zvino program continued to evolve, culminating in the Zvino Aviamatka, an ambitious creation capable of carrying five fighters, two above the wings, two below, and one beneath the fuselage. The Aviamatka's test flight was a success, with all five parasite planes deploying and redocking safely. In the early stages of World War II, Zvino aircraft demonstrated operational effectiveness. Fighters, launched from bombers carrying two 250-kilogram bombs each, executed devastating strikes on targets in Romania. Despite success in approximately 30 combat missions, the Zvino aircraft were retired in 1942. The enemy's superior air capabilities and the obsolescence of the TB-3s and I-16s used in the latest Zvino configurations contributed to their retirement. 747 AAC In more recent explorations into the potential of parasite aircraft, attention turned to the conversion of mass-produced commercial aircraft, notably the massive Boeing 747. In the 1970s, amidst a period marked by rapid technological advancements, Boeing developed the concept of the 747 AAC, or Airborne Aircraft Carrier, following interest from the U.S. Air Force. This ambitious project aimed to surpass all previous flying aircraft carriers by creating a craft capable of carrying up to 10 fighters. These fighters could be deployed, retrieved, refueled, and rearmed, significantly enhancing operational capabilities. The chosen fighter for this project was the Boeing Model 985121 Microfighter, specifically designed for the AAC. Each microfighter was to be equipped with two 20mm cannons and bomb mounting points. The Central Mother Craft was a converted 747, already known for its capability to handle substantial cargo loads. It was to be fitted with a specialized deployment mechanism on its underbelly and an inflatable landing skid for the microfighters. These fighters were designed with retractable wingtips to facilitate stacking within the 747's hangar, and an internal conveyor belt system was planned to release two fighters every 80 seconds. Additionally, the 747 AAC was intended to feature quarters for pilots to rest while their fighters were being prepared for redeployment. Despite the sound premise and promising conceptual drawings, the project faced significant technical and strategic hurdles. One major concern was the potential loss of multiple aircraft and pilots in the event of a 747 being downed. Ultimately, these challenges led to the cancellation of the project before any physical prototypes were constructed. Boeing, however, reported that the project was technically feasible, demonstrating the potential for such an ambitious design. Though the 747 AAC never materialized, 
the design work and conceptual advancements made during this project may have laid the groundwork for modern alternatives, such as the use of unmanned drones in similar capacities. Flying drone bases, Lockheed C-130 Hercules and XQ-58 Valkyrie. The evolution of flying aircraft carriers has entered a new era, with the focus now on unmanned drones, poised to revolutionize 21st century warfare. These advanced drones, seen as the fighters of the future, are changing the dynamics of military engagement with their groundbreaking capabilities. A leading innovator in this field, Lockheed Martin, has been transforming its C-130 Hercules transport plane to deploy a swarm of small drones, aptly named Gremlins. These drones, equipped with various payloads, are designed to disrupt enemy defenses without risking human lives. Due to their compact size, Gremlins can also perform reconnaissance missions and can be recovered by the C-130, enhancing operational flexibility. Gremlins are light, cost-effective, and can carry 60-pound payloads with a range of 300 miles from their C-130 base. This design allows for the collection of crucial data while minimizing the risk to pilots. Some Gremlins are intended to be expendable when delivering explosive payloads, while others are designed to be reused for up to 20 missions. The program has seen mixed results in its development phase. One notable test flight, which involved launching a Gremlin drone from a C-130, unfortunately ended in a crash due to a parachute anomaly. This highlights the ongoing challenges in perfecting such complex systems. In parallel, an innovative, entirely unmanned concept has been developed with the XQ-58 Valkyrie drone. This drone is designed to carry and deploy even smaller Altia 600 drones. Test flights have already demonstrated the Valkyrie's ability to successfully release the Altia 600 from its weapons bay. Similar to Gremlins, Altia 600 drones are inexpensive, yet reusable and versatile, capable of carrying out a wide range of tactical missions. As various flying drone bases and armed drones continue to be developed, their deployment on future battlefields seems increasingly imminent. These advanced systems represent a significant shift in warfare tactics, promising enhanced capabilities while reducing the risk to human life. Do you think the future of airborne aircraft carriers will finally be solved with drones? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching Dark 5. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.